Let me tell you about my friend on whom I depend. He's the best friend I ever knew. With all my heart, I want to serve him. With all my heart, I want to please him and do what he wants me to do. But even at my best, when I'm put to the test, there are times when I've let him down. But the wonder of it all, he loves me when I fall. He loves me just as I am. Though I've failed the Lord, he has never failed me he's been everything and more that he said he would be promise is he has kept so faithfully me when I'm down, he loves me even when I'm wrong, he's been there on the mountain, he's been there in every valley, he's never left me alone, for well, there have been times I know when i failed him so, yet he's never let go of my hand he's always been there loved me and to care why he loves me I don't understand though I failed the Lord he has never failed me Everything and more that he said he would be. His promises he has kept so faithfully. fail the Lord he has never failed me Jesus has never failed me on a hill called Calvary Jesus, my Lord, suffered for me. Carry the cross all the way. My sins to atone, my sins to atone. Then they nailed him to the cross. Great was the pain and the loss. He suffered it all. Because he loved me, because he loved me, because he loved me, my Savior died. On a cross was crucified, no greater love my mortal man has ever been known. He 
suffered it all because he loved me because he loved me then they carried him away placed him in a lowly grave surely they thought that this would be the end of this man the end of this man but on that third and glorious day god came and rolled the stone away he rose from the dead because he loved me because he loved me crucified no greater love by mortal man has ever been known has ever been known all praise his dear name he loves me so now i am his he's mine i know he suffered it all because he Surely they thought that this would be the end of this man, the end of this man. But on that third and glorious day, God came and rolled the stone away. He rose from the dead because he loved me. was crucified no greater love by mortal man has ever been known has ever been known all praise his dear name he loves me so now i am his he's mine i know he suffered it all because he loved me, because he loved me. Well, I was sitting there thinking, Cousin Three would be a good title for that group. But then I looked around and said, there's two sisters and a cousin. Cousin Three won't work. Amen. Well, it's been good to be here tonight. The young preacher preached his classic this morning. That will go down in the records in heaven. And everything he said, I say amen to. The only thing was, I just regretted I didn't say it first. You have your Bible. Turn with me first to the book of 1 John, chapter 3, I'm going to read one verse of Scripture, and then I'm going to move on to several passages of Scripture I say on the TV broadcast. I suggest you jot these references down so that you can study them in detail at a later time. It's because he loved me. And I want to tell you, once again, I know that he loves me. And I want to tell you once again, I love him. Greater love hath no man than this. I'll tell you what. We have love here, family love, friendly love. But I want to tell you that agape love from heaven cannot be outdone. As we read this particular verse of Scripture, 
I'm going to be using for each point a different passage of Scripture. I'll be moving into the book of Ephesians, Judah, and then Judah, rather, and Revelation. But first of all, I'm very interested in one particular Scripture reference, and that's verse 2. Beloved, by the way, I'm included in that beloved. If you're saved, you're included in that beloved as well. Now, hallelujah, I like this. And this is shining ground. Now are we the sons of God. I want to tell you, ladies, that is a generic word. Because there's the brotherhood, there's a sisterhood, and we all one hood together. I mean, we are the family of God, and we are all inclusive tonight. Now, I know that there's a group of people calling themselves the religious crowd that says, well, the women are just second and inferior, and the men are all there is. Well, I've got news for you. I've seen a few men around in this part of the country that thought they was all there is. Well, I got news for you. We'd be in a mess without those women. They sure do know how to cook and keep house. Amen. So as we look at this, behold, now are we the sons of God. Now, I don't know when you were saved. I don't know at what age, what time. But if you are in the family of God, you are included in that now we are the sons of God. And that is a generic word, as I've already said. It says, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. I don't know. I've not got there. But I want to tell you, I'm on my way. But it does not yet appear. We've got a glimpse in the book. And John, the revelator, tries to give us a synopsis. But I want to tell you, there's not enough there in Revelation for us to get a true glimpse of heaven but I got news for you. I'm going there. Now, as we see next, it says, It does not yet appear, but behold, now we're the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, and I'm looking for that moment just any time, we shall be like Him. I want to tell you right now, I could stop right there and preach a message on we shall be like Him. We don't understand everything about heaven. We've got a little picture. John gave us a little picture about heaven. We don't understand all about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But I'll tell you what, we shall be like Him. By the way, He walked through a door. I can't hardly wait to see if, I, to see if I can accomplish that. Now, there's some other things that he did, too. I don't think I'm going to try to walk on water. I think I'll just stay on dry, hard land. But as we see this, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we shall, for we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now, when I think of that particular verse of Scripture, you know the thing that's going to impress me the most? I want to see the nail prints in his hands. I want to see the nail prints in his feet. Because you see, he went to Calvary for you, and he went to Calvary for me. And I, by the way, it went a little further than that. But as we think on the redemption in Christ, in uh, Ephesians 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I want to tell you tonight, we are reconciled to God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are as if we are already seated in the heavenlies. It's as if we are already there. Now, I know somebody's going to say, well, Brother Man, why am I having it so hard? Why do we have sickness down here? Why do we have trouble? Why do we have problems? Why do we have suicide attempts? Why do we have all these things that go on? Well, I want to tell you one thing. 
I don't understand. I wish I had the answer. But I want to tell you one thing that I firmly believe. I believe, like the little sign says, he will not bring you to it if he cannot bring you through it. Now, some of you people have been through the fire recently. Some might be still going through the fire. But I want to tell you, my God is sufficient tonight. And by the way, he knew what you was going to go through before you got there. He already had a plan of how he was going to be with you through the fire. I know there's job situations. I know there's family issues. I know there's health issues. All kind of issues that we face in this walk of life. He says, I will be with you always. We could stop right there and shout for a while. Do you remember the day you got saved? It's so fresh in my mind as if it were yesterday. Well, I want to tell you, every step of the way, he's always been there with me all these years. And I don't think he will forsake us this close to home. Now, as we look at this, and we want to just look at the heavenly life tonight. By the way, we're going to heaven. Do you agree with me to that? Do you want to get on the next load? There's this little boy. The preacher was preaching like everything. He says, everybody that wants to go to heaven, stand up. Everybody hopped on their feet except this one little boy. At the end of the service, the preacher went to the young man and said, Son, don't you want to go to heaven? He said, Uh-huh. He said, Why didn't you stand up? He said, I thought you was getting up below now. So as we look at these scriptures and we see what God's teaching us, turn to the book of Jude chapter, well, it's chapter, it's one. 24. By the way, that's only one chapter in the book of Jude. For you that never read your Bible, just one chapter. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. I like that scripture. You see, in heaven, uh, there's going to be life without sin. Did you hear what I'm saying? In heaven, there's going to be life without sin. I want to tell you down here, there's a lot of life and there's a lot of sin. I've told it years ago, many times through the years, I guess. I never will forget, oh, Trinity Baptist Church over beside the railroad tracks. They was having a testimony meeting. Back in those days, they call them popcorn meetings. I mean, all of a sudden, somebody stop, uh, pop up, and they start giving their testimony. That's just like popcorn, popcorn rub up and down. And this one woman, and I'll never forget it. I won't call her name because I think she might have some family here. She stood up and says, I just want to tell you one thing. Since I've been saved, I've never sinned a day in my life. She sinned right then in the church house. She lied. Oh, listen, but I want to tell you, one of these days, we are going to be delivered from the very presence of sin. I watch, I look, I see around the town, I see things on the news media, on television, and I hear of these of things, and I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm sick and tired of seeing I am literally sick and tired of sin. You see, I see the damage that it does to the individual person. I see what it, the damage that it does to homes. I see the damage it does to our community. I see the damage that it does to our nation. And I'm not talking about Washington now. I'm talking about seriously. Sin is damaging everywhere. Everything that is godly, sin seems to be placing its hand on it, damaging it, 
marking it, downgrading it. But I've got news for that crowd one of these days. When we get out of this place, all that's going to be there is sinless people. Sinless people. Brother Melvin, are you without sin? No. I tell you what. I get mad sometimes. If you don't believe it, ask her. Sometimes I get, I don't, I don't get to the point where I'm ready to fight. But you know, you lose your temper. God don't like that. And your wife sure don't like that. And for husbands, that goes vice versa too. But you see, what I'm talking about here, we are going to a place that there will be no sin ever in the universe. God's universe. It will be purged. Now, right now, listen to me carefully. Right now, as a believer, your sin is purged. That old sin nature, that old Adamic nature that you were birthed in, when you come under the blood of Jesus Christ, your sin is purged. But I want to go on record as saying this one thing. God saved the soul, but he, didn't, he hadn't done anything to the flesh yet. One of these days, we're going to lay this old body down. I'll tell you what, sometimes I think he's trying to lay, lay it down faster on me than I want it to lay down. But one of these days, I will lay this body down. I will be ushered into the presence of God. And I will not have to worry about sin or the presence of sin any longer. Because you see, there will be no sin over there. Isn't that going to be heaven? But as we look at this, a few more scriptures I want to share with you tonight about heavenly life. Go with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse number 5. There shall be no night there. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you what, you better get your sleep caught up with here. Sometimes I think people, and I'm not going to say that. We need to choose a place where we're going to sleep. Where the wise is sufficient. And there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign. Oh, oh look at that. And they shall reign. Can I repeat that one more time? And they shall reign. Forever and ever. We're not just going to sit around and twiddle our thumbs and, and, and wade in the, uh, the river of life and, 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 and eat the fruit all the time. We're not going to be doing that. It'd be boring. You say, Brother Melvin, in heaven would be boring. I tell you what, I like a little variety myself. Do you know what we're going to be doing in heaven? We're not going to be sitting down having a little conversation. These, they used to have these little cartoons, you know, about what heaven's like and have these, everybody's going to sit around, they got wings on their back and they got a harp, they strung their harp and by the little stream that's flowing down, hogwash. You know what we're going to be doing? We are going to be serving. And I want to tell you, we're not just going to be serving the locale of the city. We're going to be serving God throughout all of his universe. I don't know where he's going to send me. But i tell you one thing. I know who will be giving me the strength to get there. I mean, I know who will give me the sufficiency for the trip. Because you know why? He's already given me the sufficiency for the trip home when I close my eyes down here 
If I go, if I go out before the rapture, would y'all do one thing for me? Would you not grieve over me? Because I'm going to be home. Glory to God. Notice here. Let's look then at. Uh, let's look at. Uh, we did. The, let's look at Revelation 21 verse 4 for just a minute. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, and neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. <laughs> Can I shout a little bit over that one? Dear Lord, down here, my body hurts. And when my body hurts, I want Miss Mildred to know it. And she says, Amen. But can you imagine a body that will never have to go to the hospital? A body that will never have to go to the doctor's office? A, a, a body that will never have to go to the drugstore to get your medications refilled? Honey, I don't tell you. We're going to have a perfect body. That's heaven tonight. By the way, that makes me so excited. I, I'm about ready to go. I'll tell you what. The song says, I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. As we look at these scriptures, you see, there'll be no more death. Here's life without death. Then in Revelation 20, uh, uh, the same revelation uh, that is given, there's another point that, uh, that we glean out of that. And, as, and God shall wipe away their tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. No more suffering. No more suffering. Then in verse 3 of 22, Revelation, and there shall be no more curse. Will you agree with me tonight that this earth is cursed? Will you agree with me tonight that the curse came in the garden? Will you agree with me tonight that it was because of a woman? I want to go one step further. There was a man connected with that. I've heard people say, well, if it hadn't been for Eve, we wouldn't be in this mess. It takes two to tango. You see, Eve was being the weaker vessel. But Adam said willfully that there'd be a hope. I know Adam might not have been the perfect man, though he was put in a perfect environment. But I want to tell you one thing. It was because of his willingness to condescend down to where his wife was so that they both could be raised and elevated. Unity. Unity. And did you know that's still a true picture of a home today? Unity. The husband and wife. Unity. Oneness. Oh, listen. There won't be any more death. There'll be no more suffering. There'll be no curse. There'll be no more separation. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in air. <laughs> and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Let's go to the book of John, 1 John, chapter 3, verse 2. And we see the life without defeat. Beloved, now these are the words of John as he's speaking to the Christians. Now are we the sons of God. You see, John was teaching us we are already at the point of conversion, sons of Almighty God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Also in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, 5 through 27. Wherefore, put it away, lying. Speak every one 
every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one, one of another. Be ye angry, listen very carefully now, and sin not. Oh, I'm telling you what. That slaps me in the face. Because I tell you what, sometimes I get angry. To the point I just want to stomp my feet. And I guess when I stomp my feet, I'm sinning. But one of these days, says, says, be angry, but don't sin, don't sin. And, you know, that's hard to do. But, you see, we've got to realize who we are. And who we're serving. And when we realize that, I'll tell you what, that anger, God can take care of that anger. As we look, it says, For we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Not let the sun go down on your wrath. <laughs> Neither give place to the devil. There's a time when I was Working without, I was ministering at another church. There's one of those deacons on that deacon board that I think he loved to get up in the morning and plan to how he's going to mess up my day. Now, y'all, y'all never, y'all, pre, y'all people never preach. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all who have a grinning like a possum. And somebody told me, so-and-so said thus and thus about you, Brother Melvin, and uh, it's not true, and he's spreading it. I knew it wasn't true. I got mad as a wet hen. And I got mad as a, as a wet rooster, too. But I thought I'd use hen as an illustration. I was sitting there at my dinner table at the, there at the house on Better Sweet Lane, and I was mad. I talked to Dot, and I let her know how mad I was. And she was agreeing with me. It's all right, you're mad. But you know what? All of a sudden, somebody tapped me on the shoulder. And it wasn't anybody visible. But it's the Holy Spirit. And here's what happened. About that time, the phone rang. And this person that told me that said, Brother Melvin, I got to tell you, I was wrong. That man did not say that about you. I was in a predicament. I was, I was so mad. Now, y'all never have been mad, have you? I mean, I was so mad I was ready to chew some nails, but they wanted any nails in the house. And you know what happened? About that time when my madness was overflowing and I was enjoying my madness, somebody else talked to me. Smoked my heart and says, Uh-oh, you messed up with God. You know what I had to do? I had to get the phone directly. I had to dial that man's number. When he said, hello, I said, hey, how are you? And we had conversed just a minute. I said, called him so-and-so. I just want to tell you, i got to confess, I was having bad thoughts about you. Because somebody, and I didn't tell who, somebody said, you said this and this about me, and I found out they, they called me back and said, I was wrong, and I had bad thoughts about you. I don't tell you, you say, well, now, Brother Melvin, that was a mighty big man to you. No, it was a mighty big God that got me by the seat and says, do it, buddy. You see, that's how we stay straight with God. I mean, when, hey, let's, the Bible says, "Don't let the wrath go down. On, let the sun go down on your wrath." I was, hey, it was already getting dark, and I started dialing that number. All right, then closing. No, I, I'm, I got two or three more closes. I like to close a lot of times. Thank God, that's going to be life without weariness in service. 
In Revelation 22, verse 3, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. We're going to be serving. And then finally, and this is my last one. Thank God there's going to be life without separation. And 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, and 18, and these are my last scripture verses now. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Brother Melvin, who are those dead in Christ? You've got to be dead. That's talking about graveyard dead. All oh, the graves are going to burst open. I don't know that they, I don't think they're going to, you know, picture shows the graves, but I don't really think they're going to burst open. I think we just, it's a, those caskets are not even going to hold those bodies. I, I believe that they're just going to come up. Now it says, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh, listen. Then we, now we could very well be the we's of this scripture right here. In fact, I'm fully convinced some of us will be the we's when this takes place. Notice, then we which are alive and remain be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I've told you about my fear of heights. Let me just run through this real quick. I always thought, well, dear Lord, I'm not going to make it. Rapture and me going, because I have a fear of heights. It's not going to be that way. God's already showed me. Now, 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 don't have to worry about that. God's already showed me that when uh, he gives a shout and we come out, it's going to be as we, when we come back with him and we go to our bodies and we come out. It's going to be instantaneously. We're going to be right in heaven with him. That fast. Can you imagine leaving this world of sin and sorrow and all the trouble, all the havoc that Satan has done to God's creation? Can you imagine? Just like that, we're going. That is if you're saved. That is if you're saved. Now, I want to say right now, don't trust in your church membership. Don't trust in your membership of Westside Baptist Church. One of the greatest churches around. I'll brag on my church. I'll brag on my people. I'll brag on everybody. I'll brag on this great... Well, wasn't that a great message this morning? I'll brag. I tell you what, when we go up, like the song says, I didn't see him go up, but I'll see him when he comes down. Glory to God. Closing. Closing. It says, we're going to be with him forever. Wherefore? Listen carefully now. Wherefore? Comfort one another with these words. When someone's down and out, someone's worried about what's going to happen in Washington, D.C., somebody's worried about what the world's going, what's happening in the world and fixed to happen, what's going on, and scared to death, afraid the economy is going to collapse and people and not going to have money to buy food with and all that kind of stuff. Just tell them, don't worry. Just look up. Our redemption draws Every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we've opened your book tonight. We've read great, wonderful, precious scriptures that encourages our hearts. Tonight, 
We as your people need your ever-present help, your encouragement, your strength. Because when we leave this house of worship tomorrow, we'll go out into the mission field. And our lives might be the only Bible some people ever read. Help us to go with an exciting living testimony good news. He's alive. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Let's stand our feet. What we're going to do is we begin to sing. As I look over the congregation, most people, as far as I know, are saved. But young pastor and myself have been encouraging you. We need to get a vision. We need to get a vision. We need to catch hold of God. And we need to claim victory in Jesus Christ tonight. I'm asking you, would you slip out of that seat and come in together as a group? And let's get around the altar once again. Let's touch heaven on behalf of the needs of the people of Newton, Georgia, and Coweta County. That's right. Come right on as we begin to sing. Everybody, let's join in the prayer. Let's sing, son. There is coming a day. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. No heartache shall come. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my.